Hi there, welcome to this rules overview, quick rules overview of viticulture, uh, the strategic game of winemaking. Uh, as you can see there's a couple of glasses of red there and we have two empty coasters at the table so come and join us. Right, so uh, here we are, viticulture, quick playthrough of the uh, overview of the rules. Let's dive in. Okay, I've set this up for two players. Um, it plays up to six out of the box, which is fantastic. Uh, all that happens is each of the worker placement fa uh, spaces, the first space to the left, it's a slightly smaller, uh, different shade that has these rings around. This first space to the left on each of the worker placement spaces is available in a two player game. If you're playing three or four players, there's also the middle action space and <clears throat> in a five to six player game, all three action spaces are available to everybody. The middle action space is a bonus action. So for here, if I place my little orange um, grape picker, if I place him on the middle action space, this is build one structure, I can actually build that structure for one layer or less if he's on the middle action space. Okay, now in a two player game, it's only the left action space, but if I place my grandy worker there, we all have one grandy worker now. If I place my one grandy worker there, he can then take the action from the middle action space. Pretty cool. Also, as in most worker placement, when you place your worker there, that's it, that space is gone. So if, like, purple here, place their worker here, that space is gone. But if I then want to do that place, once per year, I've only got one grandy, once the place the placed, I can place my grandy behind here and he can use that action space. He does not get the bonus, but he gets the action. The only time he gets the bonus is if that space wasn't taken and they put him on the actual official place in a two player game, he can then get the bonus. But if it's already taken, I can put my grandy behind and he can get the initial action. But what's cool as well is purple could then go behind and get the action again. But you've used your grandy worker up then. And this game, what, what's quite unique, certainly I've not seen it in any other games that I've played, is that the worker placement phase, there's summer, which is all these yellow spaces, and then there's winter, which is all these blue spaces. And obviously, in summer, we start in summer so on the left of the board, we can only use the yellow spaces. There's then an interim, uh, which is fall, and then we get to pick either a summer visitor or a winter visitor. It's strategic how you pick those. You can pick a card each, that's how you get. Basically, the summer visitor cards and the winter visitor cards let you mess with the game uh, a bit, they let you cheat a little bit, but they're very powerful, they're very, f lots and lots of fun to use. But everybody gets a stab at it. So, I mean, this game, it isn't a dry white or a dry red. It's very sweet and it's very, very smooth. And it's a heck of a lot of fun to play. A lot more fun than, than I thought it would be. It's great, great fun. He even has this race to the first past the post mechanic as well. So it's a heck of a lot of fun. And, you know, everybody should at least have a go at this game because it really is that good. Now, <clears throat> to start off with as well, which is a really nice mechanic. Um, we First of all now, we have uh, pick for start player, and it used to be the oldest player or, or whatever, but now in a two player game, we just put, I think it was actual, actually the um, the cockerels, or the, the roosters, put them in the hand, and even if there's six of them there, randomly pick one. Okay, in this case, orange myself will go first. So, that would be my wife going second, Donna. So what we do is I get a pick of all these actions here. If I want to guarantee going first, I go in first action space and there's no bonus to me. I can go for second action space and get a green vine card. I could go into the third action space and get a purple um, wine order card. 
I could go into the fourth and get one coin, a lira. I could go into the fifth place, I can get a summer visitor card or a winter visitor card. I could go into the sixth place and actually get a victory point. Or I could go into the seventh place, always popular to start off with, and get an extra neutral worker to work for myself. And uh, and there, so so that's pretty cool. So even though I got first player, which is this bunch of grapes, we don't need that because we've got a better first player here, the giant cockerel. So even though I got first player, I could say place here and get my extra man. And Donna then could play, say, here and get the extra point on the track. Everybody starts at this starting point and you can actually go to minus five. You can't go any further than minus five. So she could, from start player, and uh, from, from start area, go up one, one point there. But what's also cool as well is now the round starts, even though I'm start player, because she's first in the cockerel order, the rooster order, I should say, she get to go first. So as you can see, it scales back from the uh, the rooster near at the top, whatever colour that is, that player goes first and comes down. So she'd go first. Now, on your player mat, your player board, it's very well laid out and there's a lot going on here. <coughs> you have three fields and that's how you plant. We have the whole wine process. And one of the things is, is to get vines which are the green cards, I'll get a few here now, get these vine cards, and we have to plant these, these vines. The way we plant the vines is, is going on this action space here in the summer uh, actions. We go on here, the bonus for this is clearly getting two vine cards instead of one. So here I get one vine. Now at the beginning of the game, I should have mentioned, everybody starts with a pinot. And the pinot gives you, the vine on the pinot gives you one red grape <clears throat> and one white. But if you look in the left hand top corner, it's got a picture of a trellis. And in the game, this is what a trellis is. And the trellis costs two lira. And you start with three lira. So it's, you know, it's, it's, it's reasonably priced, but it's two lira to start, uh, to buy the trellis. So you buy the trellis for two lira. You can and will very early on buy your water tower, your um, irrigation, and that goes here. And this now lets you do plant all the different vines that are available um, because some have none, but most have either a trellis on or irrigation on. So the sooner you get the two of these out, the better. Then you can plant your fields. So you go on this space here and you can plant the, uh, the vines. <clears throat> To get the vines in the first place, we have a drawer action space here to draw the vines. So we're on there, we can plant the vines. And the rule is, it has to be a maximum value of six in each field. So if I place this one here, that's got two. Let's say on another action, or I've got the grandy worker action, and got the bonus, I've played two cards. I now have a total value here of two, plus three, five, but I have a value four white and one red. So I'm on five, that would break the bank, so to speak. I could not do this placement because that would be two, three for five, six, seven, and you're only allowed a maximum of six. So this one would have to go in a separate field on its own. And I could put another one on there, and there we are, right up to six. If I put one on here, there's two. Now that one could have gone there to make six. And there we are, six on here as well. So let's just say I've got, gone getting cards, getting the green vine cards and I've got these two buildings out onto my board and I started planting my crops in my field, my vines. Now <clears throat> from there I need to get them to my crush pad. So in the summer stage of the game I can place on here and that's harvest one field. So I look on here and say I wanted to harvest this field here, I would get a value four white and I place it on the barrels here and it magnifies through the glass beads which is really smart and I get a value two red. Count them up. So there's my two red and it goes here and at the end of each year 
everything ages. The grapes on the crush pad and the wines in the cellar. So just age them forward like so. Now, so that is how harvesting them they come to the barrels. Then how, from the barrels I can then get them into my wine cellar and there's a, a make wine action here. Originally it was called crushed grapes. In the updated rules I have this little token but there's going to be uh, an, a smart token in the uh, Kickstarter in March it's due for where there's going to be a token that covers this space. And it's actually now it's a lot more simplified and better and it's a, just a simple make wine. And by placing your worker here you can make up to two bottles of wine. So <clears throat> if I get some wine order cards, let's have a look. This is how you're going to get your victory points. So I look on here and this card, it, it wants a, a, a value 4 wine, a value 3 wine and a value two, 2 wine. It wants three separate bottles of wine, all with minimum values of these. So if, for instance, I'd done my work here on my crush pads, I'd harvested and I'd now I'd done my, weight, my make wine and I'd done it a few times and I've got, say, a value 6, uh, a value 3 and a value 2. Now to go into the six, the small seller is free of charge, it's already there. The medium seller, again, through collecting money for doing wine tours and things like that, I would, I would upgrade my, um, my seller to a medium seller. Before I do that, I cannot use the medium seller. I wouldn't lose the wine bottles here, but they would not age into that seller till I've got that seller. I can upgrade again, and would do in the game, to go to a large seller. And then I can use this large cellar. And that's the only way you can actually make champagne is by having the large cellar. It's very cool how this works. Um, you, you have the the wine, the grapes you picked off the off the vines when you do your your, your action there. You have them here in the uh, on the crush pad. Um, and then when you make the wine action, they get transferred over at the exact same value. So if uh, an eight here, say I had all my my cellar's built, an eight red here, if I could make two bottles of wine, would go straight over to the red and it'd be an eight red. The four here would be a four red. Now the five white here would be a five white and so on and they age each year just like they would on the crush pad. Now that's making straight red and straight white wine. We can also make blushes and the way to make a blush is from over here it has to be a white and a red. So let's for in, say for instance, I had a five white here and a two red, and I say I'm gonna make a blush, that's making one bottle, I'm allowed to make two bottles of wine by going on the space over here. So I'm gonna make a blush. So say I use the five white and the two red, I make a blush of seven. And there we go, I've made a blush of seven. And some of these cards that you fulfill, here's one here. It needs a minimum of a five blush. You can also make a champagne, sparkling wine, and that is, requires two reds and a white. So let's say I had this set up here. I could make a champagne on my make wine action. And I've got a three red, a two red, that's five red. And a two white. So I could make a champagne of value seven there, the first one there. And again, that at age. And of course, as you guessed it, the blushes and the champagne had more victory points. Now the cool thing about filling these, nobody else knows which ones you've got. They can guess, think maybe by what you're, you're making in your wine cellars. But you just declare by going here on this action to fill a wine order. You've got a little boat here taking the barrels of wine off. So to fill the wine order here, and of course there's a bonus action where you get a bonus point as well. If you use the bonus action with the grandy. So go here, fill a wine order, and I could say, well... I'm going to fill this wine order here and let's just say for instance I had my two red, uh, a three white and an eight blush. So because these are the minimum requirements. So I'm going to fill this order, there's my two red, there it is, that goes off. My two white, I've got a three white, that suffices, that's fine. I need a five blush, I've actually got an eight blush, that'll do the job. I get five victory points, one, two, three, four, five. And also, two on the residual payment tracker. I don't get the two coins straight away. It's even better than that. I get them every single round at the beginning. 
So I go to the residual payment tracker and I put my little bottle on too. This can go up as I collect these and go up to a maximum of five. And that would mean at the beginning of the year, every year I get five coins, which is great income. They don't go back, they can only go up, but it stops at five. So it's a really great mechanic. On this board itself, there's a few other things going on. Um, I, can, I can even buy a windmill, one of these cool little windmills, for five lira. And then uh, every time I plant one of these vines, just every time I plant one of the cards, I earn a victory point. But it costs five lira. The cottage, nice cool little cottage here. Every time I buy, a, a, I uh, draw a, a draw one extra visitor card each fall. So by paying four lira here and putting the cottage on my board, um, in the fall, in the interim between summer and winter, in the fall, when we draw a visitor card of our choice, I can draw two if you if you got the cottage. Um, the tasting room is very tasty actually. It's this little like table piece. We put that here but it's quite expensive, it's the most expensive piece to put on, it costs 6 lira and when you give a vineyard tour, you, which is a popular one of earning money, you get one victory point every time you do a vineyard tour. So it's a maximum of one victory point per year. So if you use the grandi to do the action again, I wouldn't get the extra victory point, it's only once per year. So the game's quite tight, it's really fought out well. There's one more thing, there's a yoke, and it's actually got it's the only place on the board where I can place one of my meeples. It, it costs two lira, and if I place one of my meeples, and remember your meeples are pretty precious to you, but if I place it on here, I can actually uproot one of my vine cards so I could put, plant something else. It's a bit like a get out of jail so you can redo something. Also, we start the game with two regular workers and the grandy meeple. But also we can, like in a lot of games, recruit further workers. And in the standard game we have three more we can recruit. So as you can see, over time your little game engine and your work and getting resources will increase. A simple way of getting them is placing them here on this house. Here. And it costs four lira. You bring your man here. And at the end of the year he's in your pool of supply to use. Um, the... Visitor cards are absolutely fantastic, let you do fantastic things. For instance, this summer visitor card here, the contractor, gain one lira, build one structure at its regular price, and plant a vine. Just on this one card you can do three things. They're really good, they're really powerful, and they're really smart. When we're playing, we've played free player of this, quite a few games at free player, and we'll pick a card, the game's heating up a bit, we're all around about uh, up to say the, the 15 mark on the on the score and we only need 20 points and we'll say yes! Just It's like a bit of kidology and people are thinking has he got a great card that's going to really give him the you know that extra impetus or is he just kidding? Nobody knows. If we go for the teacher here, train a worker for only 2 lira. You may not use that worker this year. So you can train a, train a lira, uh, train a worker sorry, for 2 lira rather than 4. So it's half price. So there's great, great things and you can get little combinations of cards that work really well for you. And of course you can only play a summer card in the summer and a winter card in the winter. So, that, so that's strategic in itself. So you do this, you plant your, your, your vines, you harvest them into the barrels, into the crush pad, you then make them into the bottles of wine, you fulfil the orders. And, then, and, and all the time you're playing these fantastic wild cards as well. There's a lot of player interaction with these cards and it makes it a lot of fun. The unique thing about passing the post is, say I pass the post on my turn, so I've gone to the win. As you notice, the track goes up to 25. So Donna or Charlie, as we play with, normally he plays green. Say on his go, because we play out the remainder of the year, he actually comes to here, he's won. Even though I pass the post first, you play out the year and the player wins. Now in our last game, me and Charlie, Donna was around about here, me and Charlie actually both hit the 25. I would have gone slightly, he went past it by one, I would have gone past it by two, but that doesn't matter, you stop at the 25. And he actually beat me on, on Lyra, because then it goes to tiebreakers. Absolutely fabulous, absolutely fantastic. Um, mentioned most of the things, but uh, all that needs to be said is that, at, yeah, at the end of each year, age grapes and wine 
uh, tokens collect residual payments um, which is these here getting your income uh, you discard down to seven cards you're only allowed a maximum of seven cards in your hand but so during the year you may have more than seven but you have to discard down to it this at the end of the year you rotate the first player marker and that goes counterclockwise and uh, and that's it and this is one absolute cracking fun game to play I knew it was going to be a good game because I've read a lot about it and read the rules the one thing that really struck me was the fun factor it really is a lot of fun it's steeped in theme the whole wine thing's just there from start to finish you really feel like you're you're getting the grapes the vines you 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 know getting the grapes into the crush pad you're making them into the bottle of wine you're filling the orders but then you've got all this fun thrown in and the first past the post it's a lot of fun and it's coming up on Kickstarter in March for the um, second edition copy along with a fantastic uh, Tuscany expansion and uh, so check it out thanks for watching hi uh, one thing I forgot to mention or two really on here there's a spot for sell grapes it's just a way of getting income from the grapes here ideally uh, you want to make these grapes on the crush pad into wine but if you put your man here on the sell grapes action you can see this is tiered anything in this first level you can sell for one lira here for two lira and in the bottom three lira and if you're really desperate for cash you can always put any number of men in this action spot here in summer or winter and gain a lira, one lira per man I think I said the uh, harvest field in summer it's actually in winter as you can see it's on that side of the board the only other warning is do not whatever you do put two water towers irrigation towers together Thank you.